Nations Church. We restore and release potential in people by connecting them to God. Good morning, good morning, and we welcome you to All Nations Church Carrie's House. We are very happy and excited that you're worshiping with us today. Our Bishop Dr. Frank Ofosuapia and Reverend Mrs. Mary Ofosuapia welcomes you. At All Nations Church Carrie's House, we restore and release potential in people by connecting them to God. This morning's service will be live on all our social media platforms. We will be live on Facebook, we will be live on YouTube, and we will be live on Twitter. We'll also be live on our church website. Please, let us all share, invite our friends and families, and I believe that their lives will never remain the same. The Psalm says that we should worship God with gladness, and we shall come into his presence with joyful songs. So this morning, are we ready to worship God with gladness? And are we ready to come into his presence with joyful songs? With a shout offering, please, let us all welcome Karis Worship. Hallelujah. Come on and worship God right where you are. Come on and say something to your master this morning. Father, we bless you. Father, we honor you. Father, we worship you. Come on and just give God a hand clap of praise. If you're excited to be in the house of the Lord, if God has done anything for you, come on and open up your mouth and give God a shout in this room. Hallelujah! Come on and put those hands together. Sing a little louder 
and just say something to your father hallelujah so we're in the month of faith and I was thinking about the word faith and I've been pondering on it over the week and a lot of times if you're anything like myself a lot of times we make our faith unwaver I think the enemy's job is to attack our faith all the time um, attack our promises attack anything that the enemy at that God wants that has declared over us excuse me and um, the Holy Spirit said to me make sure that you are intentional about declaring what I have spoken over you a lot of times we get so bombarded with lies of the enemies and things that God did not say but I just want to encourage someone today to just keep declaring what God has spoken over you. Have faith in what he said. For his promises over us is yes and amen. Hallelujah. Come on and just say something to your father this morning. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We worship you. There's no one like you. I love you, Jesus. You are my strength. You are my hiding place. You are my rock. You are my shield, my provider, my healer. Come on and just think of all that he is to you this morning. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. You call me out upon the waters, the great Where my trust is without borders, 
If you are here and you need an element, please lift up your hand. The ushers will come around. Please let me see your hand up. The ushers will come around and give you an element as we sing the blood song. He paid the price. The blood that Jesus Peace. shed for me. Yeah, so if you need an element, please let your hand up. of Jesus. Amen? In the Garden of Eden, it delivered a couple from trouble. 
once they get to Jericho, the symbol of the blood delivered the whole family. By the time we go to John chapter 1, the same blood is saving the world for God's glory. And today, I tell you, there's so much power in the blood of the Lamb of God. I want to trust God with you that God will heal the sick today, this morning. As you take this blood, God will touch you in the area of your need. Hallelujah to God. It is all about having faith in this symbol, the bread and the wine. Rehab, just believe by the scarlet thread that when I put this thread on my house, while every house is falling apart, my house will be secured. And this morning, God will secure you. Hallelujah to God. He will heal you. Hallelujah to God. And he will touch you. Hallelujah to God. The psalmist says, he paid the price. Sing just one time, he paid the price. Let's sing together. I owe the celebrate and eat with you Lord heal every sickness in our midst today in the name of Jesus Lord touch us Father by the power of the blood of Jesus get us right in relationship with God as we eat together in the name of Jesus for I received from the Lord Jesus that night which I also delivered unto you the Lord, the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Please take the bread. In the same way, in the same manner, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant, covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Please drink the wine. And take a moment with God. Just talk to him. Any need you may have. That God will touch you through this symbol. Faith in the blood.
Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, continue to give God praise for the blood. Come on now, I said continue to give God praise for the blood. Because if it had not been for the blood, amen, I don't know where I'd be. Man, oh man. This song, I'll never forget when I first heard this song. I was, you know those necessary fights in life? You know, it looks rough. It, you, you feel it. It's painful, but it's necessary. And I'll never forget where I was in my car when I first heard this song. And it's just stuck with me from, it was in 2020, and it's stuck with me, and every time I hear it, it still moves me. And it says this. And because God is the greatest power, we shall never, ever be defeated. And because God
is exalted will never be defeated never be defeated the devil is a liar god is exalted yeah will never be defeated will never be seen the devil is a liar your life. The devil is a liar. Cause God is exalted. So we'll never, 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 ever, ever defeat. Oh. Hallelujah. the preacher I'm not the bishop it's a, but I know we I'm gonna take my seat but I know we we show up and we give God praise and we give God glory and tell him how awesome he is but let me tell you something more times than not I come in here because I have a chip on my shoulder for the devil he 
thought, he thought, he thought I wouldn't make it through the week. My mom, just this past week, she got into a horrible car accident. He thought he had my mama. But the devil is a liar. Because my mama's still here, still breathing, still walking, still talking. Because the devil is a liar. And God is exalted. The devil is a liar. ourselves to encounter and utilize the presence and power of God to do great things in the world. It is the day to empower God's people to walk in dominion of all aspects of life and leadership. It is the season to engage the nations for the cause of the King and His Kingdom. It is the season for new challenges, new achievements, and new levels of productivity. These are the days of His power. These are the days of His grace. These are the days of His majesty. 2023, our year of exploits. Please stand and welcome our senior pastor, Dr. Frank Ofosu Apia. Somebody give it up to him. Somebody give it up to him. Somebody give it up to him. If the devil is a liar, somebody give it up to him. Oh, you are not giving up at all. You are not giving up to him at all. Oh, Lord God Almighty. We will never be defeated. Yes. If you agree that we will never be defeated, put those two hands together. Let's bless the Lord in the house. Amen and amen and amen. Man, Tyler. Ma, 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 ma. Let's celebrate the Lord for Tyler and Karis worship. No bless. I didn't want him to stop. <laughs> amen and amen. Listen. We are live on Facebook, we are live on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, church app, website. We want to make all our friends and family worshiping with us welcome. Please let somebody feel welcome this morning. Oh, celebrate them in the house. You might think. They want to try me, but... Uh... Be sure. You know, I'm not used to this thing. I like the thing that breaks your teeth, you know. We're going to be okay? All right, I'll try. If you see my hand like that, it's just a creature of habit thing. But listen, if you have your phone, can you share to about two or three people? It's, it's, been, it's, been, it's been piping hot in here, hasn't it? Just pick up your phone and share. We are live on Facebook. We are live on YouTube. We are live on um, Instagram. Twitter, check up, monitoring spirit.
it, everything. Let's share it to them. Man, you may be seated in his presence. And thank you, thank you, thank you, Carrie's worship. Wow. What a morning, what a day. We bless the Lord. Amen and amen. I want to welcome all of you again to our first service. And don't forget, right after this, be our second service, the official launch of the next service. Amen. <laughs> oh, who said, who? I'll be watching to see if you're going to be there. But what a day to be alive. We thank God. This is the first Sunday of the month of June. Wow. Six months already. Enter into six months. Wow. And I actually feel sorry for people who are not born in June. I mean, <laughs> where, where, where would the world be without June bonds? You know, those who are born early, you are not okay. Those who are born late, you are very not okay. We, who are in the middle? We are the, we are the, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are there any June bonds in the house? Yeah, God bless you. God bless, I need to look at your um, birth certificate. <laughs> Well, bless God. We bless God for all of you. We've had a wonderful time already, a time of communion, dining with the Lord through the blood of the Lord Jesus. I want to welcome you again. God bless all the pastors. Special welcome to you, Reverend Joseph Menu. Please, let's make Reverend Joseph Menu welcome in the house, the president of Father Care. Listen, not, very few things spiritual happens in our county here and in our city, Loganville, without this man. Ever since we've been in this area, every prayer effort from National Day of Prayer to the monthly pastor's prayer get together, this man has handled it. Sometimes I look at you and I'm tired. I wonder how you're able to do that. Because t let me tell you, pulling pastors together, <laughs> it's more difficult than dealing with demons, I'm telling you. <laughs> it's no joke. Pulling pastors and, and also preaching, preaching in front of pastors, it's no joke. I kid you not. Because you're already calculating whatever you are saying in the Greek and the Hebrew. But pulling them together month after month after month after month, I think we need to appreciate this man. Thank you so much, man of God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And Reverend Joseph is heading some missions. He was in Colombia the other day, not too long ago. And they are doing an amazing thing in the, in the west coast of Africa, in Ghana to be, to be precise. There's a little mega city called Kaswa. Is it Kaswa? Yes, a mega city there. Is in, who is from there? We need to give you deliverance. <laughs> Did you point to somebody there, Kay? You're from Cal Oh, okay. That's nice. <laughs> but how many of you need help in this life? In any way? Come on. Anybody needs help? Yes. One way or the other? Yes. You know, we all are needy people, aren't we? Yes. We are needy people. And on this first Sunday of June... Faith for exploits. Shall look at how faith will help you assess the help of God. God gave us a word this year. Exploits. Daniel eleven thirty two. 32. For the people who know they are God. The God you know is the God you get. Amen. Not somebody's God. Not a God that somebody told you about. But a God that you have encountered. Because a day and a time comes in your life that life will ask you questions. Just like the seven sons of Sceva who attempted to cast out some devils in the name of the Jesus that Paul preaches. And the demons spoke to them and said, we know Paul, we know Jesus, but who are you? We bless God that in our little way we, we are getting to know him. Even the Apostle Paul, after all the years of his experience, he still says that, that I may know him. And the more you know him, the more faith you have in him, the more confidence you have in him. And like I said, we all need help in this life because we are all needy people. There's no one listening to me today who is 100% need-free. We may not look like it, we may not act like it, but we are all needy. That is why Jesus in the first believer's attitude, the Beatitudes, he said, blessed are the poor in spirit. We are all poor, one way or the other. You may have a lot of money, but you are lonely. 
You might have degrees, but you are not happy. Everybody needs something. And I realized that it's only the dead who does not need help. They're gone. Many people struggle in this life not because of plenty of witches and wizards. But it's because they don't have the right help. I think a couple of Sundays ago when Reverend Bob Ando was here, he, he opened our eyes to the man by the pool of Bethesda. The house of grace. Carrie's house. That's all it means. And he let us understand that it was not that he had excuses, but he made efforts. He said, anytime I try, somebody got, went there before me. Which means he, he wasn't just laid back asking the Lord to send his breakthrough through UPS. But he made an effort, but he said, I have no man to really help me make my effort come to pass. And the truth of the matter is that there are people listening to me today. Whatever you are facing is not because of lack of effort, but it's because of lack of help. If only somebody had helped you, if only heaven had helped you, things would have happened. That is why he tells us in Hebrews 4 and 16 that let us come with boldness to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. We all get to that place, that time of need. The psalmist said in Psalm 46 and verse number 1 that God is our refuge and our strength. He's a very present help. I like that. I like the terminology. A very present help in our time of trouble. I look at that and I realize that there are people who say they are helpers but they are absent. Don't look at anybody yet. I'll give you opportunity to be looking at people. Like, see, I told you. But there are people, all of us have had people who have made pr promises to us. Oh, wh whenever you are in need of something, call me. And you call now because of the miracle of technology, they didn't see your call. But God is a present help. I like that. Did, 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 did you hear what he said? He's a present help in our time of trouble. Listen, whether you know it or not, or agree or not, God is our help. But let me take it a step further. He does not just help. In fact, he is help. You saw it there. It says, a very present help. He is help. That is his inherent identity. There are people, when you see them, there are some things about them that even in the dark, you know this is the person. And one of God's inherent identities is that he is help. Which means God can't help but help. I said, God, you, you know there are people, I can't help it but help. That, that is God. He can't help but help. His mere presence alone is help. His mere presence alone. Which means God doesn't have to do anything. He just has to be somewhere and help is there. He just has to be there and there's help. It's very powerful. In fact, all that he does and even all he does not do is help. <laughs> You'll get it. When God is doing something actively, he's helping you. And when he's not doing anything, He's helping you. Because there are some things if he did, by now you would have regretted. So, understand this, that because of his wisdom, and because of the fact that he knows what you and I don't know, when we think that he's not doing anything, he's helping us. That is why the book says that for we know, somebody say I know. Say like you mean it. It says for we know that all things, not some things, but all things work together Oh, things. And that time I read, I don't know about, I'm, I'm still trying to learn English. But when I say all oh, things, it means, oh. does it include my mess? Yes. Does it include hatred? Yes. Does it include lack? All yes. oh, things. Hear me. God has helped you and I'm in more ways than you ever know. So when you get down on your knees and you are thanking God, thank you for the things you saw and thank you for the things he didn't let you see. 
Oh, thank him for the things that happened and thank him for the things that did not happen. Because as you can listen, as you listen to me, you have your wits about you. You are saying, in spite of all the pain, the disappointment, the, the things that you have gone through, if you are still here and you can still think, it means God has helped you. Do you know how many people went through the things that you went through? But somehow they lost their mind, they lost their balance, they lost their lives, but you are still here. Listen, if you have not even pressed your own self-destruct button, it means he has helped you. You did your very best to destroy your very life but somehow God stepped in and delivered you so I can say boldly that whether he did it or he didn't do it he because his help help is here do you know how many weapons that were formed against you but somehow our God did not allow those weapons because he said that no weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper there are people that sat in council there are people that lied about you there are people that gossiped about you there are people that told half truths about you there are people that didn't give you any chance but look at you Whatever the plan didn't come to pass because he is a present help. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. He is a present help. But you know something? Because of who he is, because he is God, helping you and I has never been his challenge. No. He's omnipotent. All power belongs to him. Helping you and I has never been a problem. The problem, the challenge, is how you and I can position ourselves to receive help. That is what I'm going to today. How you can position yourself. Because a lot of people lack a revelation about what triggers the ability of God to help them do exploits. And there's this narrative that for the past few weeks, it's been messing my mind up. Anytime I see it, I go through it. It's like lights are coming forth. And that is going to be our main scripture for today. First Chronicles chapter number 5. I think I've preached only the first two, three verses. I've preached threadbare, occupying vacant positions about Reuben, who became, you know, whatever. But in First Chronicles chapter number 5, verse 18 through 22, very powerful about the sons of Reuben. Remember that Reuben, listen, Reuben had been cursed, as it were, by his father because he usurped authority. He went into his father's bed. He would be unstable as water. But Moses, I told you the other time that authority is very powerful. Moses stood in authority and he pleaded and indicated that. He said, let Reuben not die and let not his men be few. There are some things that authority will do for you that anointing can't touch. The sons of Reuben, the Gadites, and half of the tribe of Manasseh, had 44,760 valiant men. Men able to bear shield and sword, to shoot with a bow and skillful in war, who went to like the Navy SEALs. They made war with the Hadrites, the Jethro, the Nephish, and the Noda. If you are going to war with such names. <laughs> You better have God. And now look at this. And they were helped against them. Somebody's going to get a revelation today. They were helped against them and the Hagarites were delivered into their hand and all who, all who were with them for they cried out to God in battle. He heeded, go ahead, their prayer because they put their trust in him. I'm coming to your way. Then they took away their livestock, 50,000 of Why would you even go to war with all this oh, to eat? Okay. 50,000 of their camels, 250,000 of their sheep, 2,000 of their donkeys. Also, 100,000 of their men, they took them captive. For many fell dead because the war was God's. Because the war was God's. Somebody's going to have a new respect for you because they started the war but they are going to find out that the war is not yours. They think that they have authority over you. They can use power against you. But they are going to find out that the battle is not for you. But the battle is for God. And this God doesn't fight fair. And they dwell in their place until the captivity. Now I want you to know this carefully. The Bible says that the people were warriors. Like in the US we say they are the Navy SEALs. The creme de la creme of warriors. They were trained for war. The Bible tells us that they were skillful. They were powerful. 
They had numbers, thousands of them when they went to war. They went to war. But give me verse 20 again because that is where the key is. That is where the bridge is. He says that they were helped. Why? Because they cried out to God in battle. Please hear me, ladies and gentlemen. They put their trust, they put their faith, they put their confidence in God. Yes, they were armed. Yes, they were, they, they were skillful. Yes, they had numbers. But they knew that they were limited as humans. And that there was a power that goes beyond the natural weapons that they hold. And that power is in the most high God. For once have God spoken and twice have I heard that all power belongs to him. And so you can imagine that these crack soldiers, warriors with all the weapons and the numbers, when they went to war, the Bible doesn't tell us that they were outnumbered or outmaneuvered or outgunned or outfought. No, they were okay. And yet they realized that, listen, let us apply something. Let's put faith in a higher power that is more powerful than where we are. And so I can imagine them at the battlefront, they put down their weapons. If CNN and Fox were there, they are going to say, what is going on? What kind of war are these people fighting? Who is their general? How can you throw away your weapon when the enemy is right in front of you? But they got a revelation that in order to win this battle, we needed to do something. They put down their weapons. I'm sure some of them have even gone down on their knees and they cried out to God. God, and they put their confidence in him and all of a sudden the council of heaven met and said you know something I am taking over the battle from these people and the battle shall become mine I don't know who is fighting in the battle but it is time to put your confidence in God and my Bible says in Psalm 20 and verse number 7 that some trust in horses some boast in chariots but we shall remember we shall remember we shall remember the name of our Lord. Why? Because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous shall run and be saved. Shall run into them and be saved. The Bible tells us in the, in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 21, verse 30 and 31. He says that for there's no wisdom, there's no understanding, there's no counsel against the Lord. For horses are prepared for the day of battle, but deliverance. I said, but deliverance. You may prepare, yes, by all means prepare. But let me tell you, there are some battles in this life that you are going to need God. You're going to need some faith in Almighty God. When they put their faith in God, they go to supernatural help because the Lord took over the battle. They could have trusted their weapons. They could have trusted in their experience. They could have trusted in, 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 in the numbers that they had. But they chose a higher way. Listen to me, people. Victory in, the, in life is the product of divine help. Amen. I said victory in life is the product of... The, I know you've been to school. I know you've been trained. I know you have all the certificates. I know you have all the degrees. More degrees than a thermometer. But how is that working for you? There is a time that you are going to find out like Proverbs 3 and 5. That trust in the Lord with all your hearts and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, not some of the ways, but in all your ways, you have to come to that place that you know that you have the degree, you know that you have the training, you know that you have the connection, but there are some battles in this life that I need help. I need help. <coughs> in case you don't know, I have an announcement. Ding, 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 wake up. Life is a battle. Life is a fight. Anytime you meet somebody, it's either they are fighting something or something is fighting them. That is why you have to be nice to people. And if you can't help people, leave them alone. Because there are people that, people go through things and you have to, this morning I was preaching to Carrie's house in Ghana and I was telling them that the person seated beside you, they are all dressed up, but sometimes you don't, that's why I don't come here to come and insult you. You have enough insults at the warehouse already. No. That, that is not my calling. That, I, I, Jesus, that is not his calling. Because we are needy people. We are weak people. We, we, we struggle. So when you dress up to come here, you are looking for something. We want, want to help you find out. That is why we say that we restore people. And we, 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 we release their potential by connecting them to divine help. Am I talking to somebody? Somebody listen to me today. Maybe you are in a marital challenge. Home has become a little bit of hell for you. You started with I do. Now it's you better. 
You take unpaid over, over time, so at least you can escape somebody. You drive round and round and round and round before you park. Could it be that yours may not be marital? You are happily married, but it could be professional. You've gone to school for that, but somehow you can't find a job commensurate to where you are. You are better on that job, but somehow they let you train people and that those people come take over from you. All because of how you look like or how you sound like. It's a fight. For some of you, it's a mental fight that you are in. Listen, sometimes when people behave funny, it's not because they are funny, but life is funny. You have no idea what people go through. Sometimes people walk past you and you get offended because they were looking at you and they didn't say anything. My friend, they were looking at you, but they were not looking at you. If only you knew. How many of you have, have, have found people at the traffic light? The thing went from red to green, from green to yellow, and they were still sitting. And you, you went past them to look at what is happening, and they, they are looking straight. You never know the news they've been told. Sometimes when we are driving or something, and I, at high noon, like in, in Atlanta, hot Atlanta weather, high noon, and I see people running, I tell mommy, they've had bad news. The doctor have told them you better run. And people are running for their life. People are going through things. Listen, the kind of mental issues that people have. They tell us that in America today, every one out of every four people that you meet have a mental illness. One out of every four. So if you're in a group of four and the three look normal. No, don't, don't look at anybody yet. <laughs> don't look at anybody yet. <laughs> <laughs> you, you need help you need help for some it's relational everybody comes into your life it's not that you're a, good, a bad woman or a bad man but suddenly they turn their backs on you and you wonder what have I done wrong it's a fight my friend for some it's a financial fight your bank account is in a coma you take your card debit card or credit card with confidence to Walmart Say, no problem, let me swipe this thing. And the thing whistles. It, do, it doesn't even say card decline. See, 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 see. It's speaking to you in whistling tongues. Thank you, evangelist. You know what I'm talking about, man. If I were close to a high five you. We know, we know the deal. How many of you have attempted to take your laundry to, to the dry cleaning? And somehow you say, oh, let me check out the pockets and some $10 fall out. And this is pure manner. Pure manner. You needed $10 before you were kicked out of the apartment. And this is 10 Help. Job 14 and 1. Job says that a man that is born of woman, his days are few and full of trouble. But the beautiful thing is that we are not alone. We have a helper who fights our battles for us. And the beautiful thing about this help, let me clue you, let me clue you, is that he stands in his own class. When I, when I was growing up, I was a little bit, I don't know the word. <laughs> but uh, some of the big boys in our primary school didn't like me because it, it looks like I knew almost everything. Because I'll read, I'll read big, big, big people's books. I'll, you know, I, I think I was the first person in history who could go to the library and check out books that had no pictures in it. <laughs> and and you, you know, and sometimes the, the, the boys would tell me at the last bell, when we finish assembly, we will beat you like we own you. Any, anybody knows what? It's like a threat is hanging over. It's just the same threat that hang over Adam's head that the seed of, the, like Satan said, the seed of the woman is coming. But our school was said that primary school was here, the mission house was here, and middle school was here. And I had elderly cousins who were very strong in the middle school. And we used to have assembly before we finished. And I made sure I'm at the back. Because the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. I started learning faces before Einstein came around. And the moment we said, Amen. But between A and the mm, I'm gone. I am gone. And I'm hiding behind my cousin. The bullies to come to a screeching halt. My cousin said, do you want, do, do, what, what do you want with the boy? And I said, no, 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 no. You know what I'm talking about? And listen, we have a God. Like Tyler said, we have a God that is in his own... Uh, am I talking to somebody? I want to boast about this God. I said, I want to boast about this God. The thing about it is that when you fight him, he will throw everything at you. God doesn't fight fair. 
He will look in your Bible. He will fight you with thunder. He will fight you with hail. One time the Philistines, he fought them with hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids. Preparation edge couldn't help them. Couldn't help them. That, that, is, that is the God that you and I said. In fact, Moses said in Exodus 15 and 3 that the Lord is a man of war and the Lord is his name. The Lord is a man of war and the Lord is his name. That is the God that we fight. The platform for exploits is when you cast down your physical weapons as it were. The things that you think you have acquired. Because I'm telling you, regardless of who you think you are, and where you have gotten in life that you are raising your shoulders like a coat hanger has been left permanently in your, coat, in your shirt. A day comes that you realize that you need God. Because when we have worked with God for a while, we get to that place where we think, we, no! If you, if you walk the places I've walked and visit the places I've visited, you humble yourself. Yeah. Warriors! Warriors! They threw down their weapons and they sought divine help. And when the battle became the Lord's, their victory was assured. I realize this, people of God. Let me, let me come down to this. That one of the greatest hindrances to securing divine help is pride. These soldiers, Pastor Ben, mighty men, warriors, skillful, but they realize that we are limited. They humbled themselves and they prayed. James chapter 4 verse 6 is a scripture that when my eyes got open to it, it messed me up. I find out, he says, but, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to them. Then I, it dawned on me that when you are proud, the devil leaves you alone. Oh, that, 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 get, 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 go back. When you are proud, the devil gives you uh, No, no, he doesn't bother you anymore. So all of you are proud. Satan has left you alone. But God is the one who's going to fight you. God resists the proud. It's not Satan. It's God. Now think, do you see what I see? I'd rather Satan fought me than God. God resists. He will take an active stand again. Could it be possible that there are some of you, the reason what you are going through is not Satan? It's your pride. It's your pride. We are very proud. And pride is resisting you. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5 and 6. He tells us how to dress. You younger ones, submit yourselves to your elders. America didn't hear this. No, no, no. America didn't hear this. No submission to... Uh, no, no, no. The people that have worked in the dignity of years, we don't respect them anymore because I'm American. He told us that when you are in a room and an elderly person with gray hair enters, stand. We need to hear that. It's in your Bible. You can't choose and pick, my friend. You need to humble yourself. I didn't say you should be a fool, but have some deep humility of heart. Do you realize that God, God did, never asked you and I to pray for hum, humility? If you ask God to humble you, he will humiliate you. Everywhere he talks about it, he says, you do the humbling. You know you have money. You know you have degrees. You know, I know you have this. You have talent. You have, but it says, put them all at the disposal of God. And say that, had it not been you who gave it to me. And he says, yes, all of you be submissive to one another. We need to be submissive to one another. And then, this is the latest Designer clothing you have to wear. Be clothed with humility. Then he goes on again and tells us the thing that I don't like. God resists the proud. So my question is, what are you wearing? What are you wearing? When he knew that the time had come, he knew that the father had given all things into his hand. He knew where he had come from, where he was going to in John 13. The Bible says that Jesus, he took off his rabbinical robes. He took off the things that identified him as Lord and Master. And he took a towel, the garb of a common slave. He went down on his knees and washed the feet of people he knew would betray him. If it were you and I, what would we do? 
You see how far we have walked from the Lord? Honestly, if it were me, that I knew Judas would betray me, and I'm washing feet. When it got to him, I wait. Fire up the water. Fire up the <laughs> superheated. Fire the thing for me, and I will pour it slow. Slow. I will cook the guy's feet so he will not be able to run to betray me. But he said that if I am your Lord and Master, who which I am, if I have done this, then it is an example for you and I. Why are we so proud? What zeal do you have that makes you so proud? Pride is like bad breath. When you have it, nobody tells you, but nobody gets close to you. And the interesting thing is that pride has faces. Phase one, phase two, phase three. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let, let me give you five of them. The, the people have the pride of place. The pride of place. Their social standing. I was born into this family. I, I am this. I, I have a, a, a hyphenated British name. I, I am this. So what? So what? Royalty died in accidents in the tunnel in Paris. So what? For some, it's, it's not just pride of place, but pride of face. Your physical attribute, the way you look like. I'm cool, I'm nice, I'm this, I'm suave, I'm the bonnet. No, look at me. You spend all your life in front of mirrors. Like the woman the other day, I'm asking, what kind of man do you want? Six foot man with a six pack, made six figures. Antichrist, right there. Six, six, six. Six foot, six figures, six, six. Antichrist, right there, my friend. Antichrist. Now, don't look at any six foot guy. And by the way, Raymond is taller than six feet. So, let me tell everyone. So, some people are pointing at you, so I have to tell them. Raymond is 11 feet. For others, it's pride of grace. The pride of grace. What do I mean? My religion. My tradition. I am Pentecostal. I am charismatic. I am Baptist. I am Catholic. So what? So what? Did your denomination die for God? Uh, for God's people? How much blood does your denomination manufacture for the salvation of sinners? How much? We are so proud about denomination. As for me, I am there. You are what? All these things are traditions of men. All our churches, traditions of men. Whatever it is, men. It started with the revelation. Then it went into nations. Then it became a denomination. That's all. For others, it's the pride of race. That one, I'm going to discipline myself and run. My race, really? Your skin color, really? Ethnicity, really? Many times, unless it is mandatory, those forms, you, 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 I don't feel them. I can cancel it right, human. Because there's only one race. There's only one race. What makes you feel superior over somebody? Because they don't look like you. One time I had to ask somebody that, what, what, what contribution did you make into how you became? Accomplished warriors. They knew better. They put their confidence in God. They put their weapons aside. Kingdom principles that don't make sense. I hope I'm getting somebody somewhere. So if you're going to assess help, please humble yourself and trust in God. Put your because listen, I've, I've met people, I've seen people. I'm telling you, even for me as a pastor, I know that I'm not going to stand like this forever because it's only a fool. Who does not look over their shoulders? And to believe that, as for you, you are exempted from nature. What makes you think that if people who have gone ahead of you who may have been more anointed than you have become old news, one day you will get there. Mentally unprepared. Everybody has a sell by date. That's why I have to quit once you are at the top. 
Got to understand that. So my friend, my brother, sister, listen. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean on it. Let me give you three quick things in eight minutes and I'm gone. Outcome. When you, when you have humility and you trust in God, three things happen that I picked up from the scripture. Number one is found in verse 21. There's divine provision. When you trust in the Lord, when you humble yourself and you trust him, there's divine provision. Provision. Verse 21. They went in there and the Bible says that when the battle became the Lord's, they took livestock, they took camels, they took sheep, they took thousands of them, all of them became theirs. Listen, when you trust God, he provides. I know in America, credit card can buy everything. But you are going to wake up one waking up morning. To realize that money can't buy you everything. Remember, I, I don't know if it was here that I told you the other day. Or I think I was training in New Jersey. And I said, don't think that the only blessing in the world has the color green. Because there are people, if dollars are not attached to what you do, it's not a blessing. You know why you are alive? You think that you woke up all by yourself? Huh. <laughs> Abraham, the father of faith, he trusted God. He believed in God. God gave him a promise in 75 that I will give you a child somewhere in between. He even his faith wavered a little bit. Got an alternative. God is my help, but God said, I will do it. My promise may go through process, but I will do it. For 20 something years, God didn't talk to the guy again. And now Isaac comes. And the Bible says that God comes to Abraham and says, Abraham, he says, yeah. I want you to sacrifice my son. He was quickly going to get Ishmael. God said, hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Take your son, your only son, whom you love, which means the one that you got was yours. But it was not yours. It's like that one is a mistake. But do you realize that when Isaac grew, he and Ishmael were playing under the same roof. Miracle and mistake. Under the same roof. So those of you who are in a hurry to create your own mistake. When the miracle comes, Sarah looked out and the Bible says that she saw Ishmael and Isaac playing. And behold, Ishmael was mocking Isaac. If you don't deal with your mistakes, they will mock your miracles. Abraham took the boy and they started up the mountain. They had a group of people around them. And the Bible says that when, the, when Abraham saw the place, that is Mount Moriah, which later in the New Testament we see it as Mount Calvary, the same place that God will sacrifice his only son. Abraham was a type. When he saw that place, he said to the people around, wait here. There are some places you are going in life, my friend. Listen, some people can't go with you. Amen. Tell them to wait here. Amen. Their feelings may be hurt that that's too bad. It's destiny matters. I have come to that place, my friend. What is ahead of me so possesses me that I can tell people, wait here. I'm comfortable at this place, at this time. I'm very comfortable. I've seen a little, not all, but I've seen some. The boy asked the father, he has firewood, a gleaming machete, but I can't find a sacrifice. And Abraham, who had trusted the Lord, said to Isaac that God will provide. That is confidence. God will provide. I know you are getting old, but God will provide. I know things are delayed, but God will provide. And when he took up the machete to do the number, the angel of the Lord called out to Abraham. said, Abraham, hold on. And the Lord God, you see, sometimes there are some sacrifices for those of you who don't like giving. Hear me. There are, <laughs> there are some sacrifices. Hear me. There are some sacrifices that can provoke divinity to talk like mortality. <laughs> Abraham, listen, Pastor Ben, God says that now I know. I thought you were omniscient. And you are telling me now you know. Divinity is talking like mortality because something provoked him. I know you are smart, but you need revelation. I'm talking from a place I've stood with God. 
So you can battle it. It's fine. I live my life. I'm cool. I'm happy. Because my revelation doesn't have to become your revelation. So please, please, if you don't understand my revelation, don't trouble me when I see my manifestation. Because I have to do the ridiculous in order to get my miraculous. God said, now I know. And the Bible says that, and the Lord showed Abraham a lamb, a ram, caught by the horns in a thicket behind him, which means Abraham had walked past the thing. His provision, the substitute was there, but he had walked past. But because of what they did, they trust in God. The Lord opened his eyes and showed. Could it be possible that somebody here, God has something for you, but you are, you are walking past it. You are walking past that breakthrough. You are walking past your future husband. You are walking past your future wife. You are walking past that job. You are walking past your breakthrough because God has to open your eyes. It was behind him. And you know the beautiful thing? He was caught by the horn. Why? Because every ram fights with the horn. When God blesses you, he takes the fight out of it for you. The blessings of the Lord, they will make you rich and will add no sorrow to it. God took it out. Divine provision. The next one is divine protection. Look at verse 22. They went to war and none of them fell. They went to war and all of them came back because the battle became the Lord's and not theirs. The battle became the Lord's <coughs> and not theirs. There's no record in the Bible that any covenant man or woman in there fell in battle. I'm sure the enemy shot at them. I'm sure the enemy tried to kill them. But because they were standing on the platform of humility and trust, protection became their portion. Some 105. Begin to read from verse number 13, 12, 13. It says that when, when they were, when they trapped the children of Israel, the people of God, they were small in number. 12, 12 says that they were small. They were not mighty. They were not plenty. And they traversed from nation to nation. From one kingdom like nomads. But the Bible says that God did not allow anybody to harass them. He rebuked kings for their sakes. How did he tell them? He said, touch not my anointed. This was not talking about some prophets that bully you with that. That you can't disagree with them. That you can't say anything back. No. It's error. They are lying to you. This one was a collective thing that God was saying. So any man or woman of God is telling you, touch no it's wrong. It's wrong. It's error. It's self-serving. And listen to me, anything that is wrong is wrong. I don't care the anointing upon the wrong thing. It is wrong. And do my problem. That is what God says about you and I. I, I know, I know, I, know I, I gave a scripture, but listen, when you walk in humility, evangelists, and you walk in trust. There's, there's something that God takes over to do for you that you don't need to do. They are called written judgments. You know in the book of Psalm, I think Psalm 149, 150, it talks about to execute the written There are written judgments in the Bible. I think I used to teach that some years back. There are some judgments. You see, when you go to the law court and you have done wrong or something and the judge is giving sentence, all things being equal, the statutes are in the book. They are there. If you do this, this is your time. If you do this, this is your punishment. So he cannot look at you and decide, I don't like you. You are too tall. You are too short. You are black, white, stri striped. So I'll, no, it's in there. It's a written judgment. And in the Bible, there are written judgments. Give me 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 6. Second Thessalonians. It says that, no, no, no don't give me that, that, that one. I'll skip it. It's, no, no, no. Give me 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse number 6. Find that one for me. The other one I gave you, discard it. I'm about to finish. I've got about a few minutes. It says that it is a righteous thing with God to pay with tribulation, tribulation those who trouble you. And to give you who are being troubled, rest. Us, with us, when the Lord the, Jesus is revealed. Which means, listen, one of the righteousnesses of God is to repay with tribulation those who trouble you. So when people are troubling you, get on the platform of trust in God. Commit your matter to God. Give it to him. Don't go on social media and fire back because you are eloquent. Don't go on social media and throw shades because you can throw shades. You know there are some, some, some tribes, they are very good at throwing shades. 
Give your matter to God. Keep quiet. Commit it into the hands of God and step back because it is a righteous thing with God. So divine provisions, divine protection, the last one, divine direction. It makes a whole lot of difference. Do you know that divine direction, God giving you direction in life, can be the difference between life and death? A lot of people, your challenge in this life is because of miscalculation. No, don't look at your husband. Don't, 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 don't. When we humble ourselves and we trust God, he directs us. He orders our steps. He guides us. When Abraham was in a famine, he was allowed to go somewhere for help. And yet when the son was about to do the same thing, God said, no, stay here. And let me bless. Divine direction. Isaac, he prospered by direction. And I'm happy to announce finally that you will be distinguished by divine direction. Amen. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21 says that for your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in it. You are hearing. Others are not hearing what you are hearing. That is why you prosper and they don't understand. Because there is divine provision for you. Divine guidance for you. God is leading you. Divine direct. Sometimes you can even make a wrong turn. But I tell people, and I'm done. I tell people, listen. One time, when all these GPS things came, this world has really traveled. So I'm not afraid of it. Chap GP3 or whatever it is. Listen. You remember events that once upon a time, if I, if I had to come see you from, if I'm out, out of state, I'm come to visit. We went to the, is it MapQuest? You printed all those things. They were on your, in, on your lap and if you don't have air conditioning, the people will be flying everywhere. You know, you know what I mean? That is why you shouldn't give up. Mm. And when this GPS thing came and I had the first GP, GPS in my car, it was what? Tontum. <laughs> Somebody is asking, what is this? Tom Tom is a drum. <laughs> you have no idea. And one time to give, now one time I said, listen, let me test this thing and see. So I had put in the address and I was driving. You know when they keep quiet. So for some of you that when God is not talking, please keep going. You are too negative. Go, keep going. You are okay. You are on the right path. Don't go fast because I'm not hearing from him. He says go. When you are wrong, you hear from him. And so I was riding and the woman was quiet. Then I, the exit, I said, no, I won't take this exit. I want to see what she'll say. So I went past it. Then sister came up. And she said, I'm recalibrating from where you are. And I said, that is what the Holy Spirit does. Occasionally we make wrong things. But he's recalibrating to bring us back. My name is Frank Obusapia. Your ambassador of hope. I'm done. Help! Somebody say help. Can you ask God for help? One way or the other. Just in the next one, one minute, two minutes, ask God for help. I don't know what help you need, but ask him for help. Just ask. Listen, this is a prayer point. This is more powerful than acid prayers. Ask him for help. I don't know what help you need, but ask him. He's a present help in our time of trouble. Ask him. Trust him with all your heart. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not upon your own understanding. You trust pilots you don't know to fly you in aircraft that you don't know how they work. You trust drivers to drive you. You don't know whether they pass their drivers or somebody wrote it for them. What about God, the possessor of the heavens and the earth? Online, wherever you are, please ask him for help. Help for your family. Help for your life. Help for your health. Help for your children. Help for your career. Help for your future. Ask him. It's not too late. Ask him. Because I know this one thing. That he's a prayer answering God. Let's ask him for help. Father, we need your help. We have come to the throne of grace. First of all, to obtain mercy. And to find that grace to help us in our time of need. Father, we are needy people. We, dre we dress like we have no need. We walk like we have no need. We do things like we have no need. But Father, tonight, today, we come with humility to you. And we say, Father, we need your help. For that person who needs a change, Father, give them that help. Father, 
people who want to make a move but they are scared. Father, forgive and get mercy at the throne. And Father, enter and help. Because sometimes we are weak when it comes to decision making. We are weak when it comes to taking risks. Father, that is who we are. We are needy. So we have, we come to the altar. We take hold of the hold of the horns of the altar. And we say, Father, help. 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 Our help comes from you, the possessor of the heavens and the earth. I pray, my Father, that there will be testimonies of help this week. Testimonies of help in this month of June. Testimonies that will blow our mind. Some of our people, ourselves, me included, we have prayed prayers a long time ago and we have given up because we didn't see immediate answers. Father, help us to see them. Father, show us that mercy because you are our refuge and our strength. If there are things that we are involved in, Lord, that may destroy us, Father, help us by blocking us. Things that do not come from you, Lord, let us not have it. Things that will destroy our future, let us not walk into them. Let us be a people like the tribe of Reuben. We are sophisticated. We are educated. We are anointed. But Father, we throw down all these weapons at your feet and we cry out to you. Say, Lord, help us. That is our prayer. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody agree with me and say, Amen. amen. Now, bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Please be seated. We're going to take our tithe and offerings. We're going to take our tithe and offerings. Please listen to me. There are, gen generosity is a gift that God gives to us. Amen. It's a gift. If you struggle with generosity, it means there's something wrong with you. It's as simple as that. Anything that God controls gives. The least you can do in the body of Christ is to support his work. You know in this house, no pressure, no compulsion, no twisting. Let's give as the Lord lays upon our hearts. If it's your tithing, tithe. If it's giving, give. If it's your pledge, redeem. Let's do it to the glory of God. The, the platform is out there. The giving platforms are out there. If you need an envelope, please. We have helpers all around. Let them help you and let us give profusely.
Nations Caris House, a place where we release potential in people by connecting them to God. On behalf of our senior pastor and first lady, Dr. Frank and Reverend Mary of Fuswapia, thank you for worshiping with us today. Wise Builders Women Ministry would like to thank all the ministry teams that supported them during the Mother's Day weekend celebration and to all the women that participated. Thank you and may God remember you. It is the month of June, themed Faith for Exploits. You are being encouraged to build your faith as you do exploits. June, of course, is a special month when we celebrate our Bishop, Dr. Frank of Uswapia. So under the auspices of the Master Builders Men's Ministry, there will be a night of intercessory prayer dubbed Lifting the Hands of Moses on Friday, June 9th at 7 p.m. prompt. This is a special night. Church, let's all come out and pray for our shepherd like never before. Then on Saturday, June 10th, there will be a special Champions League finale viewing gathering right here on the campus. Come in your team apparel to have fun, good food, and some cold drinks. This is for everyone, especially Arsenal fans, to prepare them for the next season. Not forgetting the faded blue team, Chelsea supporters. It will be a mega chop day. Thank you. After all, it's June, so the men have promised to show up and show out. Incredible Me for Exploits is the header for this year's Vacation Bible School, VBS, hosted by the King's Kids Ministry from June 13th to 16th at 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. each day. Location is here at Caris House, 781 Athens Highway, Loganville, Georgia. Planned activities include games, crafts, and music. This is for ages three to 13. Don't let your kids miss out on this amazing opportunity to discover their incredible potential and explore their faith. Sign up today by scanning the QR code on the posters pasted on all vantage points within the building. For more information, please reach out to Dr. Neville or Minister Eunice Adu of the King's Kids Ministry. It's that time of year again for our annual flagship conference, Iron Sharpens Iron, our Pastors and Leadership Conference. Every year, Advanced Life publishes a magazine that showcases our local businesses and events here in Caris House. If you're interested in including your business or event in the magazine this year, kindly email me at partner at advancedlife.org. Deadline for submissions is June 15th. Pricing is as follows. Full page is $250, half page is $175, and a quarter page is $100. I look forward to receiving your submissions. Our membership class is scheduled for Saturday, June 24th at 9 a.m. For all those interested, please scan the QR code on the flyer located in the foyer. Thank you. A gentle reminder to visit our Mana Bookstore for all your reading resources, the Word of the Year inscribed apparel, and lots more. Let's continue to pray and encourage each other and stay connected to All Nations Caris House on all social media platforms. This has been Deborah Peters, The Worshipper. Thank you. For more information, please visit our website at allnationsusa.com or simply call the church office at 770-923-8383. Subscribe to our YouTube page, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. Stay blessed. Hallelujah, church. Shall we stand and honor our bishop for such a powerful word? Hallelujah to God. Let's let Bishop feel great. And Bishop, thank you. Divine help is coming. Amen. I got my portion. If I were you, I would listen to this sermon all by myself again with my family in our home. Amen. We all need such a wonderful, please be seated, divine help. Bishop, we honor you and appreciate you. Welcome back. God bless you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so it's time for us to welcome our guest for today. So if you are here for the very first time, we want to see you. Your hand up. Can you lift up your hand? We want to give you. Oh, let's thank God for we have two. Two. We have two in the house. Oh, wow. Four in the house. Thank you so much. Yes. We appreciate your coming. We are so excited for your coming. Amen. And so we're going to 
welcome you with uh, our all nations welcome to you. So the ushers are going to lead you to a room where we, we will tell you more about our church family. Amen. Let's continue to clap our hands. Ushers, please lay them for us. Take them to the welcome room. Let's keep clapping. Keep clapping our hands and thank God for their coming and let them know that we honor them and are excited for them coming to. They could have gone to any other church, but they chose to come here in all nations. We don't take them for granted. Go ahead and keep clapping and thank you so much again. We appreciate you so much and we hope to see you again. God bless you so very, very, very much. Amen. Please keep clap, clapping your hands as we see them to the place. Amen. Just a few pastoral emphasis. Uh, legacy project. Can you show us the, the legacy project? I don't know whether the, the media can show us um, the legacy project for uh, Gen Nex and the future of all nations if they can show us. So, if you pledge, uh, can you show us the, the other one, the one I like? <laughs> yes, this is the one I like. This is my favorite. You see how beautiful this is? So, we gave out some cards, right, Pastor Ben? Cards. So, if you, how many of you, uh, if you are here and you need one, because we all want to be a, a part of what God is doing in, the, in, in, in here and in the future. Please, uh, if you are here and you need some cards, the ushers will come around and give you, we have some hands up here, please. Uh, I don't know where the cards are. The ushers, can you help me out with the, some cards? And uh, let's make sure that everybody contribute and participate. Yes, uh, we have somebody here that wants to have a copy. Please, let's, let's all participate. Let's all contribute. This is our future. This is our future for the children. And I'm telling you, I don't have time to tell you that many bad things are happening in, in the school system. And as a church, we need to counter-attack that with godly values. That is the, this is the whole essence of, wow, this is very nice building of Gen X. So let us make this happen. Let's contribute 1,000, 10,000, 50,000. However the Lord will lay on your heart, we really want to make a difference. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, I wanted to say this. I think some time ago, please, if you are here and you have a death in your family and you want us to know, please kindly um, tell us, you know, um, Somebody sent me uh, a note. First of all, it takes me time to even look at your faces and remember your faces. And then you all have hairdos with different colors and every week and every month. I'm tired. I cannot, I can't, I can't keep up with this. So I'm telling Bishop, all the women who do hairdo once a year and then also one color because I'm, I'm really struggling. And then if you send, you send us a note, there's no name, there's no phone number and I, 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 I have no clue. My wife will tell you. I have no clue. Like Bishop Preach. I'm looking at you like this. I don't know who I'm talking to. So you send me email and a phone number and there's no, sorry, email and there's no phone number. There's no email and there's only a name. Kwame Frimpong, I am not gifted to, to, to really, please help the brother. Help me help you. Amen. I'm saying that to say, if you are sending us an announcement, don't assume that my name is Kosi Kwachi and Pastor Kwame Frimpong will remember. I, I, I cannot. Please, I beg you, I, I'm, I'm really, I didn't plan to say this, but we want to help us all be a family. But assumption doesn't help. It doesn't help us at all. Even if I know you, introduce yourself. In that way, we can make it. And then some, so many weekends, we have many things happening. There have been time we have three events. Some time ago, we have four events. So if you don't know, it's easy for something to skip. And then, you know, uh, so please, let us know. Am I preaching? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Legacy Project. And so, uh, Bishop Bev Day is coming up in June. Hey! <laughs> he, he is turning 21 strong. Okay, 21 strong. Please, let's continue to pray for our bishop. Amen. Let us not give him too much work to do. He needs to focus on what God is saying. Amen. This coming uh, birthday is going to be awesome. The men ministry have some things coming up. Uh, Father's Day is coming up with activities, including games and cookout. But brother, brother Raymond is saying that. So that's all that I'm done. Uh, Wednesday, we're going to have Bishop Frank coming here in the church for first Wednesday of the month. Let's give God some glory in the house. I want to see everybody coming up here on Wednesday. Coming up. Thank you so much. And then... Um, the next launching right here after service. Before I sit down, uh, yesterday we had a wedding at church. Uh, yeah, hallelujah. I don't know why their names are PP. I 
Patrick and Priscilla. I think that is how the connection was made. Hallelujah to God. So how the worshiper made a connection with the media, only God can tell us how the connection was made and I, I'm not going to touch it. Can you stand to your feet, brother Patrick? And hallelujah. Let's let them feel awesome. Hallelujah. <laughs> Bishop, want to say something to them? Uh, we just want to say, God bless you so much for, for the way you let God orchestrated your moves. <laughs> God bless you. The media and the worship are connected, yes. That's a smart move, like Priscilla. Whenever she sings a song, she doesn't have to worry about who we put in the media. This guy is right there. We just want to thank God for this divine connection. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this couple. I thank you for this wonderful journey. Father, I pray that humility, as Bishop Frank preached today, will guide them. This marriage is blessed beyond measure. And we thank you and we bless you and we thank you for blessing them this weekend in the powerful name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Shall we stand, please? Let's go ahead and say our declaration. And please, again, we remind you, Gen Next is launching, so let's all stay around. Amen. Ready, go. I declare. I'm empowered to do extraordinary things. Limitations, barriers will not contain me or hold me back. Extraordinary acceleration, abundant goodness, and uncommon harvest will come to me speedily. I declare. That because of its presence, I go from strength to strength and glory to glory as I serve the purpose of God in my life. Apathy and stagnation as I praise into great exploits. I walk in dominion in all areas of my life because I fear no evil. I do not worry and I'm not timid because his promises over me are sure. The dry places in my life will be filled with singing and laughter. And God give me new life for exploits. I declare I'm a solution and not a problem. I'm a barrier. Father, in the name of Jesus, give us divine help. I pray that this week you will experience divine help at the things you need the most in the powerful name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Please, if you are staying, stay with us. But if you are leaving, thank you. I will see you next week. Because the next is coming right after. God bless you so much. <laughs>